<clears throat> my name is Wesson Rizzulli, and Riddle of Fire is my first film, and it's a neo fairy tale. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm from the mountains in the western uh, states of America, uh, where a lot of westerns are filmed. And I grew up sort of uh, adventuring in the woods and like playing. Um, big games of like paintball and tag with friends and Dungeons and Dragons and um, so that's kind of my like inspiration of that's the world that I, I'm in and then my my uh, film influences are like the huge Kurosawa and Miyazaki um, big ja like Japanese new wave is kind of my my favorite um, period of cinema with um, uh, Masahiro Shinoda and, and Seijin Suzuki and um, and those guys uh, uh, that's probably my favorite uh, era of cinema um, along with like British cinema um, early David Lean movies um, uh, I love early like 1930s American cinema pre-code stuff gangster stuff Howard Hawks um, uh, like old kind of like Wallace Beery and James Cagney movies like I love the those th that cinema early American cinema is like so hearty to me it has this hearty simplicity that I is lacking most in in a lot of contemporary cinema and um, and uh, something that I, I, I I've tried to capture in Riddle of Fire a bit um, like that hardiness plus the sort of magic of like Japanese cinema and Japanese anime, I guess, and then my home hometown of uh, Utah and my home state of Utah in the woods there. Most of my scripts, like all of them except for one, are they're either about kids or like teenagers. Um, and my next one is, uh, is, is will also star uh, two, ch two children. Um, yeah, there's something about uh, childhood adventures that um, the like innocence and ignorance and optimism um, and uh, something about that being the main character is 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 uh, allows like for me to make a main character that uh, can be this sort of I don't know goblin like fairy like character to go through a, a world and experience it um, with kind of like that op optimism and ignorance and innocence and then and, but also with like um, intelligence and creativity and and everything um, also I think. Kids are just—they're just funny, you know. They're like goblin. they they I, I love um, goblins and goblin characters, and they can—they're uh, kind of like you know the goblin. They're goblins, so um, they're just fun. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I say the, this movie is for every age. I would say because um, it's yeah, it's got kids things that the kids would like, but I think also adults can. You know, remember those times and relate to relate to the all those like you know kid adventures that they might have had or wish they had, and um, you know those interesting relationships with other kids and adults and things. Um, so I, it's really it's for everyone. You know, it's it's uh, and it's it was important for me that everybody could could appreciate it. I guess, yeah. I actually don't really watch horror movies. I don't really like them that much, but I do love like dark fantasy and, and uh, dark fairy tales, uh, which have a horror element to them. Um, but yeah, the thing also about the villains in 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 like in Riddle of Fire, you know, um, a lot of like contemporary cinema or things has like it's about like have literal monsters. You know, it's like kids versus monsters or creatures or beings. But honestly, like. The scariest villain is just a scary adult, you know, that is like that is dangerous. You know, like as a kid, that's the scariest thing. And then I think um, in the movie, uh, Charles Halford and Leo Tipton, uh, who play uh, uh, John Red Ryan and, and uh, Anna Freya, like did a marvelous job at being these menacing kind of like, a, a you know, almost like pirates. Um, um, and uh, yeah, it's something that was uh, done really well in like older. Older cinema, like for example, Disney's Treasure Island from 1950, is like it has great, great um, adult um, villains. Robert Newton, who like kind of invented the pirate, kind of like the pirate speak, he's phenomenal. And it's uh, and all those pirates are like really dangerous and scary, and um, you don't really see that much now. So yeah, that was that was something with the villains. But um, yeah, the horror, I think, just fantasy. You've got to go. It's 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 it goes super light, fantasy, right? With like fairies and and love and romance and whatever. But then you can go to the darkest parts of humanity uh, and scariness and violence and you know, I mean, 
like the whole like you know like a little girl being locked away in this cabin with her mother who's trying to brainwash her like that type of stuff so i think yeah combining it is where i'm at so i love witches um they're some of my favorite characters in folklore uh, and stories. Um, I love the, the magical, powerful woman who is completely confident and, and able to inspire and influence people just with their magic, I guess, um, but personality. And um, they are I just, yeah, I love them. And, the, and I love like the lone wolf quality of the witch, a sort of singular like woman who, who typically like lives alone or has her familiars and uh, creates magic. And yeah, there's something uh, uh, that I really love. And there's, there will be a lot more witches in my, in my uh, following uh, projects, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I like to act and uh, it's sort of, you know, if I write and direct and design some things, I think becoming a character is fully, like, fully completes my involvement in, in, the, in the world. And I, but I specifically like to play characters that are sort of random and funny. And I love that in this character that I'm, I, I get bossed around by my characters that I created. It's, um, it's just funny. And yeah, I don't know. I like to be the kind of, like to play these like little like servants or jester type characters. Um, yeah, it's just fun, fun for me. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I love to uh, uh, draw and create posters and like create like VFX and stuff. And you know the the, the screen is the canvas where all the mediums can fit. And uh, you know I, I like to get involved as, with as many as possible. Um, and as I studied illustration and graphics, and you know I love making the movie involves it involves everything. You know, and I love making the poster for them. I love to make posters before I even make the movie. I'll design the poster. You know when I'm writing the script and, st and, and such. And uh, yeah, it's all, it's, all, it's all just filmmaking, you know, it's all, it's all film and yeah. I wanted to ideally create a look that po possibly mirrored uh, the Powell and Pressburger films uh, like The Red Shoes or uh, Black Narcissus, The Technicolor kind of look uh, that is so charming and magical um, and, to, and it makes a world that is very desirable because I wanted the world to, to feel very desirable like you'd want to be there you want to ride the bikes you, you know you want to go through the woods and like and like gaze at the clouds and this uh, I think 16 millimeter uh, with saturate you know saturated 16 millimeter and the perfect contrast is that that creates the most like um, tangible sort of desirable world to go into um, yeah and then color yeah we looked at uh, God, what was the so there's an illustrator named Ivan Billybin who's this um, old uh, illustrator of, of folk tales from the early 1900s that makes these very beautiful woodland uh, fairy tale illustrations very colorful um, that I showed to my uh, cinematographer bef uh, in pre-production and we attempted to light it, uh, light something like that and create this sort of uh, fairy, like fairy tale book, almost painted, painted, uh, painted image uh, kind of thing. I, yeah, it scares me so much to work with a composer. I, I just don't, I don't have one that I'm like 100% like, yeah, you, your music is the, is the tone that is good. So I, I just, and you know, it's like the pressure of getting music made that the pressure of like having to use this music for the film is a bit like scary for me. So I prefer, I've always worked in like finding pre-existing music that sounds like it's already made for movies like this, this, uh, the genre dungeon synth is like, it sounds like it's music for fictional video games and fictional fantasy film so it's perfect um, and it's fun to mix and match but it's also crazy because you know you have so much um, too much to play with almost so um, yeah Cannibal Hol Holocaust is a uh, Resort Talani is like one of my favorite composers and I've known that song for 
long, long time, um, and it's always sound like the perfect ending to uh, 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 ending to some long, like satisfying story to me, um, rather than how it's used originally. So uh, I thought it worked uh, uh, decently for the for the end of this film. What I typically do for my type of filmmaking is I, I make loud characters, colorful characters, colorful setting, but I try to keep the f filmmaking quite simple. Um, ideally, we, tr we try to get everything on the three shot or the wide, and then, you know, but usually with the kids it was too hard, so then we have to punch in. And I, I want to cut as least as possible, but the contrast of sort of sim more simple filmmaking and simple camera movements, I contrast it with loud characters. and. Loud environment creates like a, the perfect balance, so that's not too overwhelming. Um, but yeah, the zoom, zoom, I love. Uh, it has this old school thing. Also, my thing with a push in versus a zoom in is a pu is a push. If you push in on a character, it feels like his like spatial is changing, like something is coming, and then the, the zoom is 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 creating a, a like a mental change in this character or something, and we're giving power to some mental change. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of like how I use them differently. Um, and then the other things are, I sort of, um, I, I like to picture it as almost like an animated film, a cell animated film when they, they can, they have, um, you know, you can, they can only um, pan and they can like tilt. So we did a lot of like, to transition scenes, there's a lot of tilting and then um, some panning and stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, it's, it's such an honor to, to be in the Fortnite. I mean, some of my all-time favorite filmmakers uh, got their beginning here. George Lucas with THX and Scorsese with Mean Streets. And then also Ken Loach, uh, Ken Loach's film Blackjack, uh, which, is a which is a major inspiration to Riddle of Fire. Uh, I also, I did some of the, some of the, um, some of the panning shots in the woods of the kids walking is very uh, uh, Blackjack or or, um, or Kess, you know, Ken Loach style. Um, uh, I mean, the Fortnite I've, is just I I love their their taste in in cinema, and it's I just feel like it feels like I it's just such a, it's such an honor, and you know they've I'm I'm so happy they they like the movie, <laughs> yeah.